guys, so today I'm going to be pre-sprouting all my ranunculus corms and my anemone corms that I have. So basically what you do is, I've never done it before, so I'm hoping I do it right. Basically you need to uh, pre-soak them in water for two to four hours or three to four. And what you do for that is you fill a bucket with water and then I'm gonna put them in these little organza bags so that they can hang over the side of the bucket. And then I'm gonna put them in the bathtub and leave the water on, just a little trickle so that it aerates the water because that helps apparently uh, with something, I'm not sure what, it does help though. Once those soak, then I'm gonna take them out of the water and they should be about double their size, I think. And then, after that, then I'm gonna put them in soil to pre-sprout, and after about 10 to 14 days, they should be rooted and ready to be planted outside. These are um, cool plants. They can go outside and tolerate a frost, but you don't want it to be too cold, so I am gonna put them in the greenhouse, I think. Uh, don't know how that's gonna go, but we're gonna try it, so yeah, I'm excited to try it. Once it gets to about 70, that's when they start um, slowing down and not producing flowers anymore, which 70 is not that far off. Our last frost here in 5B, zone 5B, is around the middle of May. And I think I've read that they take about 90 days to bloom after you pre-sprout them. It's uh, February 16 and I'm gonna get these started. So this is what a ranunculus corm looks like. It's like a little octopus. I don't know if it's focusing. Focus, maybe? But it looks like a little octopus with little tentacles and stuff. Um, I think that the bigger the um, corm is, the more flowers it produces. So like I have these two, which are really good size. There's a couple other larger ones in there. But then there's also little tiny ones like that. So. I'm gonna see, I don't know um, exactly how this works, but I'm gonna go ahead and put these in this organza bag, and this is the Ranunculus Pastel Mix. Yeah, these are from the Flower Hat, which I'm fairly certain is a really good source, because uh, Florette recommends them. I've had them storing up in the spare room up here that I'm using as grow room, which I have the, the seed starting rack on, and all the plug trays and stuff with lights um, ready to go, but yeah. They were stored in there, which should have been fine. Maybe next year if I um, do these again, um, I'll put them out in our shed outside that stays about 50 degrees, 55 degrees. That might be better because these are cool plants, cool flowers. So these are in the organza bag. I'm kind of thinking probably should do two organza bags for these because I don't want them to get crammed in there. Um, maybe I will. I think I'll separate them. I have another one right here. So I haven't bought any of these organza bags. These are just what um, jewelry that my mom and I have gotten over the years have come in and for some reason we collect them. And now we have a whole bunch of these that I'm using to start all of the corms in and I also use these to uh, cover blooms out in the garden when I actually do have flowers out there um, so that the bugs can't get to them. They've come in handy because otherwise I would have had to buy some of these. I've got these ones ready to go. Now I'm just going to put the anemones in the organza bag. And I also have the pastel mix um, anemone So from the flower hat. I'm really excited for these. These are really pretty. I, I really hope I don't kill all these and that I actually get some flowers off of them because I mean they're not cheap I mean you can get them wholesale but I didn't do that I got them from the flower hat which they came in packs of 20 from um, them so these I should be able to put all in one bag because they're fairly small they kind of just look like a acorn I guess I don't I don't know what you would describe I don't know they almost kind of look like a type of mushroom like a morel mushroom maybe. But yeah, that's what these look like. These are the anemones. Um, I'm gonna keep them separated so that I know, the ranunculus I'll, I'll know because they're the only ones that look like that and I only have ranunculus pastel mix, pastel mix. And then the anemones, I do have two different kinds of, so um, I will put 
marker in that. But yeah, these are the pastel. Um, let me go grab another organza bag and a marker and then I'm gonna get these in the water bucket. Okay, so I just grabbed a different color organza bag that I'm gonna put the other anemones into so that I don't need to use a marker. Yeah, these are an anemone large flowering mix, just assorted colors, I guess. I don't know. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and fill the water bucket and then I'll get them in the bathtub with a little bit of water running the whole allotted time. So I just got all the corms into the water bucket with the water just barely trickling. Um, it says to use cold water, so I've got cold water in there. And I just set a timer for three hours and then I'll come back at the end of three hours and we'll see how they look and we'll take them out. All right, so I'm out here in the shed now. Last night they finished uh, soaking and then I, go, I went ahead and planted them in this little tray. Now I just moved them out into our shed that always stays right around 50 degrees. It is heated, so yeah, it maintains a pretty solid temperature. So hopefully this will be cool enough for them. I did have them inside overnight just cause it was pouring down rain um, once these were ready to go out. So I just waited till this morning to bring them out. But um, yeah, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come out here and check on them every morning and evening. And then uh, I do have a bucket of water out here. So whenever I notice the soil getting dry, I'll just make it uh, this nice, damp, like spongy consistency. So yeah, these are all the anemones and ranunculus. So I'm sure you can tell a little, but they did definitely plump up and they lightened in color a little bit after pre-soaking them for, uh, it was right around three hours, I think, is when I took them out. Hopefully, we have success with these guys because they are looking good right now, I think. I'll come out here every now and then and keep you guys updated. And hopefully, in just a little while here, we'll have some really pretty flowers. Okay, so I just got back from a little weekend trip. Um, I had my dad watching these while I was gone, and they have all pretty much started to sprout. There are a couple, I think, that haven't come up yet, but I think now I'm going to go ahead and bring them inside and put them under the grow lights. And then I'm also going to be starting quite a few seeds today. That's probably what I'm going to be doing for most of the day, just starting seeds. So it's official, guys. We've got seeds and flowers underneath the lights. Okay, so the anemones and ranunculus are under the lights, and they've honestly grown so much already. I brought these in yesterday, that's the last clip that I uh, had for you guys, and they look a lot bigger already, so I'm really excited about that. Hopefully that means I'm doing this right. Um, this is kind of just trial, trial and error, but uh, yeah. And then over here I started quite a few um, snapdragons. All of these containers are a different box, or a different uh, packet of snapdragons. But yeah, what I did, I just sprinkled them on top of the soil and then added a little vermiculite and then put the humidity dome on them. So once these start to sprout, I'm going to take the little seedlings out and put them into the plug trays so that I can maximize as much space as possible um, with the space that I have under the lights. You guys, I'm out in the garden for the first time in 2022 in a t-shirt. It's St. Patrick's Day, March uh, 16, I believe, and which St. Patrick's Day is the day you're supposed to have your ranunculus out by in uh, zone 5b which is where I'm at so I have the tray of ranunculus and anemones here which I should have potted these up about a week ago but because I knew I was going to be getting them outside uh, in just a couple days I left them in here hopefully that's okay and hopefully they'll uh, do good still but all of these are from the flower hat which they did amazing and then these two right here that are like tiny barely even came up the other ones in here it's the only one out of like 10 i think that came up but all of those were from lowe's and only two of them came up and they don't look nearly as good obviously as the ones from the flower hat so yeah the flower hat definitely a good place to get ranunculus and anemones i'm gonna go ahead and plant these i think i'm gonna do about five inch spacing between all of them they go about two to three inches deep into the soil so yeah we're gonna try it Doing, dude. Are you a cutie? Duke, Duke, what you doing? 
Okay, so my dad helped me find this um, huge roll of concrete wire. I'm not really sure what it's actually called, but they use it for uh, concrete. And then um, this was just a spare one that he had laying behind a shed that was just, he couldn't really use it because it's so small. So yeah, I ended up cutting off. Um, it's going to be three sections here. Um, we've got one, two, and then three. And that just about covers the entire garden box like perfectly so yeah it's a nice little greenhouse shape in there and then we've got some plastic that i'm going to be able to um, put over top of it and then clamp down and then use some sandbags to hold it down and then we can go ahead and put the ranunculus in there and we've got plant hopefully this will keep all the frost off the ranunculus they can handle a little bit but just to add a little extra layer of safety i thought this would be a good idea so i already cut this i had my phone inside charging but I already cut this one. Um, so now all I need to do is take the roll out and then I can set it down. and we'll see how this works. I'm not too sure how we're going to do it already, but we'll give it a go. So, um, it fits lengthwise exactly two times and then it's about even on both sides as well. I won't be able to, oh, I might actually, it's like literally perfect. I don't even have to cut it. Sweet, let's go. So what I'm going to do now is I have a bunch of these uh, Ziploc bags that I'm going to just go fill with dirt and uh, sand from the motocross track and then these will be what weighs down the um, plastic. I also do have clamps, so I've got like five of these, so this one's missing a part, that's okay, that I can use to clamp down the top. And I don't think it's going to be going anywhere. So this is like, this is a nice setup. Okay, so I went ahead and moved the first little section off. And I'm going to go ahead and start um, planting all the ranunculus and anemones in this first little section. I'm not sure how much room I'm going to need because I only have 40. And I'm spacing them 5 inches apart. So I don't know how much of this bed I'm going to actually need. But I can almost guarantee it won't be the full thing so yeah I'm just guessing too on the five inches this is about five inches exactly so yeah my shovel is five inches okie dokie
small thing out of the tray. Oh my gosh. Look at these roots. Yeah, I'd say they were a little ready to come out. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and try to get the first form out of here without really disrupting their roots too much. Oh my goodness, these roots are so pretty. sweating. I am in sweatpants, but here's the first little guy right there. ones in the ground. These look amazing. Oh my gosh. Okay, so then five right there. I'm gonna plant this first row and then I'm gonna uh, come back to you guys when I am all the way done. Look at these roots. Okay, so the first row's in, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of these in, and then I'll check back in with you guys in a little bit. I just finished planting all the ranunculus over here, and then all the anemones right here and I still have quite a bit of room so this like worked out perfectly um yeah these are spaced at five inches apart like I said and they look pretty good so I'm gonna let these guys sit overnight and then tomorrow morning I'm gonna come out here and water them okay, so then Sunday I'm gonna fertilize them with um Neptune's harvest fish emulsion so yeah my muck boots are speaking <laughs> But there are so many mosquitoes, like, it's stupid. I'm, like, super sensitive. I don't know if you can see all that, but mosquitoes love me. Oh, there's one on me right now. Fantastic. I got him. <laughs> but, yeah. My legs are absolutely dead. I was trying to get dirt on them. Obviously, I'm, like, filthy now. But I was trying to get dirt on them to, like, hide that my legs were bare right there. But these are, like, capri sweatpants, so... It's fantastic. It's so fun out here. There's mosquitoes everywhere. <laughs> but it's really nice out and I can't complain. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and put the um, wires back on and then the plastic back over them. And then I'm gonna try to plant some peonies still, so yeah. Ignore the screaming. The neighbor kids are outside playing because it's so nice out. 
And they sound like they're having a really good time. So. bag and put it right there. Otherwise, looks pretty good on the signature plant. Clamp it down. As a professional greenhouse, if you ask me, um, it's beautiful. I, it's glorious. I should have put the thermometer. I can probably still reach in through the side. Yeah, I can still reach in there. Okay. Cool. three more anemones sitting right there. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna lift up this end a little bit. And yeah. And then I think during the day I might keep this on. I'll just roll the ends up. That way it has airflow. But I don't know, we'll see I might end up just taking the whole thing off. So, yeah, the flower hat has amazing ronchulus and anemone, anemone corns. So, cor 